Hey guys, so today I, I want to take a look back at my buddy Troy's uh, trailer build that he built with his dad. And it's an incredible trailer build. And it, it, if you haven't seen Troy in a couple of my videos, we, we've done a couple of camping trips together. And he's so much fun to hang out with. He's got a lot of crazy stories. And, and most of them, he almost dies somehow and miraculously lives. But anyways, uh, he survived uh, this trailer project that he did with his father and it was featured on a trailer magazine. And there's a lot of new viewers uh, here these days that hasn't seen this trailer um, tour that he gave me. So I just wanna take a look back and give you guys all a chance to take a look at it again if you haven't seen it for the first time. All right, in a second, we're gonna get a video tour of this awesome new trailer my buddy Troy built with his dad. He's just leveling it out, un unhitching it. All right, let's go. Good morning, my name's Troy Palmer, uh, the, the son of Palmer Boy Trailers and uh, the master craftsman, John Palmer, my father, who gets 99% of the credit for building this trailer. And the interesting thing about this trailer when you start to look at vintage trailers and, and specifically canned ham trailers is that they're they're stick trailers they're built with one by twos and they may look good from the outside but trust me there's dry rot all over so this is a completely brand new trailer from the ground up um, using vintage parts and the shape and the design was was uh, crafted after uh, 1957 Aljo. Look at that. So we started with the frame. Uh, we did two by three square tubing all the way back. So we made a brand new frame. We, we stretched the tongue so that it's much easier to tow and back up. Uh, if you remember the older trailers, they had really short tongues and were a nightmare to back up. You're always jackknifing. Uh, we put stabilizers on all four corners. We put a brand new leaf spring axle with uh, electric brakes and kind of rolling around back and tie it in the back of the trailer with a bike rack so it's all squared in. So it can haul a motorcycle or a bike rack at some point, you know, if you want to bring more utility pieces with you to camp because everyone wants bikes or motorcycles when you go camping. Since we're here at the back, um, we, we tried to use all vintage ear or NOS accessories. So all the accessories are either restored or they're brand new. These taillights were actually 1947 taillights. They were NOS, uh, still with cloth wiring. So we used those. We used a period correct uh, license plate light with the glass uh, center light. Uh, trailer. Uh, we have here our fresh water, which is a vintage trailer uh, piece. Again, you use that to fill up your fresh water tank from the inside. Um, this is for city water if you're at a campsite. This is for uh, uh, power if you're at a campsite. And then, obviously, in a 13 foot trailer, uh, we're designing it to be pulled by smaller SUVs. Um, I pull it with a four-cylinder Equinox and a six-cylinder uh, Forerunner. The weight of the trailer is about 2,000 pounds dry, so we're not quite sure what it's fully loaded, but it's it's definitely under 2,500 pounds. And the last thing that we really are conscious of is weight on the rear end. And so obviously we have a toilet, we have fresh water up front. We designed a special. Uh, black water in that we don't have a black water tank but what we did is we extended the four inch tubing uh, and we did a horseshoe uh, across the bottom of the trailer so you can see that this is the outside so if we were to campsite we would have that hooked up but if you come around to the other side of the trailer you can kind of see how it comes out the toilet and it moves around And that U uh, of uh, four inch PVC pipe is about six gallons of black water. So uh, I can do a good weekend, three, four day trip if I'm dry camping and have black water storage and not have to worry about dumping without having, you know, a 20 or 30 gallon gray and black water tank, which is going to add tremendous weight to the back of the trailer.
Yeah, it makes sense. And it's evenly distributed. Yeah. Yeah, it sloshes evenly down the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. One of the most important things we wanted to do with this restoration is we wanted to keep this as a vintage trailer, a period correct, but we wanted to add all the modern conveniences. So one of the things in a small 13 foot trailer like this is there's always a storage issue. So in designing it, um, we wanted to make sure that we had storage access underneath the seats and all the way in the back. So we'll see that from the inside, but this is the outside door, which allows to store all your dirty items if you will <laughs> um, 110 so if we're connected at a campground we have 110 out here for your appliances or refrigerator um, a lot of extra work was done into making the door so we re repurposed the flush mount hinge we actually took this off of an existing trailer and we cut it down to fit so it was appropriate for size um, repurposed this original spring door hinge and then um, made an original screen door that has the ability to do it. And that's all made out of oak just to have a little bit more strength. Again, refurbished all original hardware. And then all the, obviously all of the aluminum work is brand new. Um, when it comes to the paint, I'll show you an original sales brochure where we got the idea for the paint scheme. But this paint scheme is an original 1956-57 Aljo paint scheme. We just ad-libbed a little bit. We changed it a little bit up front here, and then we changed the front and the back because you get a lot of rock chips. So we tried to leave the polished where the rock chips might be so it wouldn't chip the paint. Uh, for a porch light, uh, we, we turned this handle and, and repurposed. This was an NOS handle, and we we now have a 12-volt porch light. You can't see it now, but it works off of a 12-volt. Oh, yeah, we can see it. Come on inside. All right, let's come on in. Wow, look at that, all that room that's in here. All right, now, Troy, how big are you? I'm 6'5 and 300 pounds, so uh, <laughs> when, I, when we made this, obviously we had to make it grande size, so everything has been increased by maybe five or 10%, but we'll go ahead and start from the front. Um, on these windows, every one of these windows are original windows from the period from another trailer that we utilized, we fully restored, totally disassembled it, hand polished them, uh, re-riveted it, um, and uh, put brand new brass screen in. So if anyone's ever done one of these original windows, you know how much work that is. There's about 20 hours worth of labor per window. So that front window has over 40 hours of labor. Let's take a look at this front window. And again, the good thing is that it's all aluminum and it can be rebuilt. The problem is, is it's just labor, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sure looks good. Yeah. And so this was designed uh, to be a, um, a bed. So this table will, will lift up and collapse and then it will uh, turn into a bed and so it'll be flat and you put all the cushions down and then you have a 7 by 48 inch bed uh, which you know probably one person my size or two normal size people two adults can sleep there most of the dinettes were designed for kids we wanted to make it for an adult um, back to the we want it to be vintage but have all the modern conveniences from a power aspect we have a converter so we can convert our 110 to power here uh, if we're plugged in or um, as we're going down the road we have a seven pin plug so we're always charging the battery when we're driving and then when we're stationary or we're parked here's our solar system um, and so our solar system is uh, 200 two 100 battleborne amp hour batteries uh, two 100 energy uh, solar panels on the roof and a 2000 watt uh, energy um, uh, inverter uh, so we've we've never run these batteries low um, the day you know right now we're at 13.6 by the end of the day we'll be at 13.9 uh, so we have the ability to run any of the electricity um, 
we have the ability to power something right here. Um, if you had hand tools or something you wanted to use outside. And we also have the ability to power a microwave, which I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, that that's a serious inverter. And I like how you have it underneath the drawer. That's yeah. really nice to save some space. Yeah, again, we tried to figure out with everything we did, I and mean, this is a two-year restoration or a, re, a, a two-year build. We tried to follow. So there's a vent there, and then there's a vent. And, the, and again, you always need your junk drawer for all your hookup and your, your dirty parts. And so we built that to fit in there, but we vented the bottom. So there's a vent here, and then there's a vent on the top for yeah, cooling. Sure. <clears throat> so that's the solar system. And... Oh, on this side, oh, to, to, to kind of even out the weight, and I, and again, we can get in the argument, are the lithium phosphate batteries worth it? I say yes, just for the matter of uh, the length of the battery life, but also the weight. On this side, we have an 18-gallon freshwater tank with a 12-volt pump. So if I'm plugged into city water, I don't, um, I don't need to use that, but right now I'm dry camping, so I put about five gallons in there so that I have enough to use the sink and use the toilet for a couple of days. And then uh, obviously a 12 volt pump and, and a filter system. And, and so when this is full, it kind of offsets the trailer weight from the solar panel or the batteries on one side and the water at eight pounds a gallon on the other side. Uh, moving and again keeping track of the original in interior. This is an original lantern uh, uh, mantle light, so it has a mantle just like a lantern does, and this acts as a light, but it also kind of acts as a, a de facto heater. Um, I don't have the little porcelain piece in it because I don't like to travel with it in case it falls out. But you basically hang a bag like you would in a lantern, and then you burn propane, and you can use it as a heater too. <laughs> And then we have all of our 12-volt uh, lights here, and then th these are our 110 lights if we're plugged in at a camp. We had we found some original curtain rods out of a trailer. I just haven't had the curtains done, but we were able, we were lucky enough to find something really close to our color and our decor. So these are actually original period correct curtain rods. I just we don't have curtains yet. And then back here you'll find 12-volt and uh, USB. And then you'll notice we have brown and we have uh, almond uh, plugs. And so these are the 110 and these are the 12 volt. Oh, that's great. So you know by the color of the switch, like behind you, the, you know this one's the 12 volt exterior and then this is the, this is the, the 110 exterior. Um, again, the, all the light bulbs, the LED is all 12 volt, all the condescent um, light bulbs are 110, so these right now aren't working, but these are all period correct, that way we restored. Uh, we restored the original ice box, so... Wow, that's big. Yeah, and it, it's really neat because it, it works well for all those foods that don't have to be super cold, but what I'm able to do is I'm able to freeze these. And I have two sets, and I have a, a, a 12 volt freeze refrigerator in the back that I am able to switch back and forth. So this stays pretty cool for all your vegetables and breads and the other thing. But I freeze everything, and then I use this as the defroster. So that's how everything kind of stays cool in this, and it tends to work pretty good. Plus, it acts as a pantry. And then all all of our drawers. Uh, our, our built original, all, all the storage here, um, anything like you would have in a regular uh, camper. Um, we have a stove right now. I don't have the grills on it because we just got here. We're traveling, but that's an original working propane stove. And guess where Troy's daughters go? <laughs> <laughs> what do they play? <laughs> so all these drawers, you had a, a pretty neat mechanism where they, they stay put. Can, can you show that how you yeah, live? Yeah, so up? So, so there's it's a cut, little... it's cut, um, so the drawer base is cut so that, that, that it fits over, see this shim right here? Yeah, and yeah. And this lock right here? Yep. So it's a shelf that drops off, and then there's that, there's that block. And what that allows you to do is, basically it allows it to keep it from opening when you're traveling down the road and have your stuff flying all over the place yeah and it's clean there's no latch that you have to deal with it looks good it looks normal yeah and that was an original 
again just from restoring trailers you pick up the original the the, the pattern of the wood uh, all of its original it's just been redone with new wood all of these handles we bought NOS on eBay, so they're pre-correct handles that have latches on them. And then we were able to kind of go a little more Art Deco with these on the yellow. Um, what else? 12 volt. So I power the 12 volt if I want to have water, and then I have water. Um, and that's a porcelain sink, right? That's not a plastic yep. sink. So um, we used an original sink from a trailer in this stove, and we got these two pieces re-porcelain, and then we painted this and this to match. Yeah, so it's an original camper stove in a, in a single faucet, but this is a new technology. Yeah, that's that's crazy detail and modern and, and old. I yeah. like it. And then you know, there's all this detail here with the aluminum work that you don't really see behind the stove and all the... Uh, um linoleum and yeah yeah you could see it very nice all right now it gets interesting so uh, again back to space so this is the pantry for your dry food items again if you're going to camp for a long time you need to have all these places and i'm still trying to figure out what i want to have and keep we're only on a one night camping trip so i don't have a whole lot this time but i'm gonna have this eventually set up so you know, you can go for a month at a time if you'd like. We tried to take advantage of this piece, which this is kind of a called a gaucho couch in the RV world. Again, this had to be longer for me. And the other thing that we did is you can't notice it, but the trailer we made seven feet wide. Originally, it was six foot eight, and that extra four to six inches really gives you a lot of width which allows you to see, sleep sideways and also allowed us to add the bathroom. Um, in here, probably probably best to come on this side. In here, this is where we have uh, kind of your, your bathroom set up. So you use the, bat, the sink to do your teeth. You got your mirror here. And then you have your vanity over here where you can store all of your goods. And obviously that's the microwave. And this is an antenna that we pre-installed for satellite radio. All right, so you could access it from either side, huh? Yep, and then this ends up being like your closet too. You can really pack a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> yeah. Again, we tried to make as much much usable space as we could, which this turned out pretty neat. All right, so um, the bathroom, uh, simple. Um, we have a closet here, uh, and then underneath that, there's like another hamper that's under here that's usable space and then a porcelain toilet or a plastic toilet um, <laughs> that's full fully workable yeah. okay. and again uh, we developed a, a special curtain rod that will allow you to again I haven't done the curtains yet but will allow you to kind of use this as a dressing area because there'll be a curtain here and that door will be open, which will block you from anybody. So you can have a changing room and you can use the bathroom if somebody else is in the trailer. Yeah, so it's kind of like a door with, you yeah. know. It's kind of like a swing door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's see, more UCLA pride. Yeah. And yes, for those that are asking, I do fit in the bathroom. <laughs> All right, so kind of... In this configuration, we have a couch, so you know, two adults can sit here. I can sleep here with these cushions removed, solo, and it works great, uh, so you don't have to take the time to make the bed. But the way this is designed is these all pull up, and this right here pulls out and makes into a bed. So this cushion stays, The all of these support pieces, and there's one here, will hold this um, uh, sheet um, yeah. and it'll pull all the way over to here and then all of these cushions will make in a bed that's pretty darn like, big. That's a, like seven feet by 50 inches, uh, which is really neat. Yeah, yeah, that looks great. And this is, and then again, I don't, I don't know if you're going to see this, but this is all storage under here. Spare tire and all the extra storage for barbecues and the stuff that gets dirty. 
you kind of saw that from the outside, but there's a lot of extra storage there for things that you may not use every day, but you need when you camp. And then this is this is another kind of cool modern piece. This is a 12 volt refrigerator, a freezer. And so right now I have it set just to freeze, so I'm freezing my items. Um, like 18 liters? Uh, 40. Oh, 40. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have gone with the 50. I think I could have got it to fit. <laughs> but again, I wanted it was we custom made it to fit there, and again, not look like a brand new trailer, a yeah, vintage trailer. Uh, what else? So up here again, more electronics. So we have cable. So we have a cable hookup before a camp that has cable again, 110 inverter, 12 volt and then 12 volt direct um, and then obviously all these lights which you can go red or white uh, for nighttime and I think that's oh uh, this custom grill again so that the cool so that the refrigerator can yeah. cool yep makes sense yeah and that's a tour of our 1957 Aljo trailer we hope you enjoyed it and and again might find a way to uh, restore a trailer yourself thank you